yesterday, the news came out that despite the fact that it was getting close to being halfway done production, Marvel has decided to scrap all the work they've done on the Daredevil series because Kevin Feige just thought it's just not good enough. And it really brought up, if you guys remember when we talked about this yesterday, really brought up the notion about the fact that I don't really think Disney Plus knows how to make TV shows, right? When you look at all the stuff they've made, with, with a couple of exceptions, they all play like they were trying to make a movie and they just decided to overly stretch it out and deliver an unsatisfying number of episodes at unsatisfying run times and yet still feel drawn out because really they know how to make movies and they were making a movie, but they want to stretch it out over six episodes. And, and that's, that's can be defined as the definition of a lot of the Disney plus shows that they've put out uh, again, the, where I really took notice of this is when, and I forget the name of the person who did it, but somebody took Obi-Wan, an editor took the Obi-Wan series and edit it down to like two hours and 45 minutes, moved some things around, did some really great, and it, they, he played it as a movie. And I remember watching and thought, it's not one of the greatest Star Wars things ever, but it's like, this is a really good movie. And it just didn't work as a TV show. I mean, some people think it did, and that's great if you enjoyed it, and I'm not trying to take that away. I'm just saying for me and a lot of people it didn't work. Well, that's partly due to the fact that, as came out in the reports yesterday, Disney doesn't even approach their television shows like TV shows. They, their shows don't have traditional showrunners. Instead, they have a bunch of executives that kind of set the direction, which kind of hurts. So you have writers coming in, in and out. Nobody really has a creative vision for their stuff. And ah, just it's Marvel. Let's, let's just make it the way we make the movies and whatever. Well, according to reports coming out in Variety, IndieWire, and others, not only did they scrap Daredevil, but it sounds like they're scrapping their philosophy and maybe they're going to start embracing the traditional television model of creating TV. This comes to us from IndieWire who said the following. Marvel instead applied its filmmaking process into TV and now has discovered the weaknesses in that approach. The Disney brand also eschewed the concepts of showrunners and TV execs, instead handing film executives the keys and a particularly blank check for the budget and charge them with making mini movies instead of TV shows. Not anymore. Going forward, says IndieWire, Marvel Television will hire showrunners, a term we're not only grown uh, comfortable with, but also learned to embrace, said Brad Winderbaum, Marvel's head of streaming, television, and animation, told The Hollywood Reporter, and assigning people the roles of full-time TV executives. Gosh, go figure. Maybe if we're going to try to make something that looks like shows, we should have people running them who know how to make shows. Movies and TV shows are two different things. They are really different arts. You're telling a movie. Now, I prefer the art of movie making because I love it when I think it's far more challenging for somebody to introduce us to characters, concepts, flesh those characters and concepts out, give us their conflicts and their obstacles, have them process through those processes and obstacles, all while deepening our understanding of the characters and the world they live in, and then bring it to a conclusion all in about a two-hour package. That's Herculean when you really think about it. And television has a lot easier. I, I mean, we can develop this person over the middle three episodes, or we can do this. Uh, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying making good TV is easy. It's not. But that, I kind of prefer the movie making art. But they are two different arts. Mm -hmm. And somebody who really knows how to tell a compelling television series that brings us in instantly in the first one or two episodes, keeps us hooked in as the episodes progress while expanding on the world, introducing subplots, all that kind of stuff, and then bringing it to fruition in the last couple of episodes to give us a satisfying ending. Damn, that's near impossible too. But they're different. And just because somebody knows how to do one does not mean they know how to do the other. And we've seen the repercussions of that in Disney Plus's, not all of it, some of it's been very good. You know I love a couple of things they've put out there. But on whole, their original stuff is not as good as HBO's original stuff. Their original stuff is not as good as Amazon Prime's original stuff. Their original stuff is not as good as Max's original stuff. Their original stuff is not as good as Apple TV Plus's original stuff. It's subpar because they have subpar processes. 
And now maybe the reality of looking at Daredevil not turning out the way they had hoped it would and realizing maybe we need a new process. It sucks, Chris, what happened to Daredevil. It yeah. sucks that they had to waste all that time and all that money getting halfway through making a show. But maybe the silver lining in this is they're going to adopt the right process. And if they do... Yeah. I think we're going to start getting better television out of them. Guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of this video, Vessi. Now, you guys know I'm not exactly the most fashion conscious guy in the world, but I love a great pair of shoes that are comfortable and I can wear almost anywhere. And growing up in Canadian winters when my feet got wet a lot, waterproof would be nice too. Enter Vessi. They make the claim that they're not just fashionable and super comfortable, they're also waterproof. Now, you guys remember, when I got my first pair of Vessis, I put them to the ultimate waterproof test. I actually stuck my foot in my pool, my feet stayed dry, and the shoes stayed dry. Incredible. And they're the most comfortable pair of shoes I ever owned. Well, that made me want another pair. So I got another pair of Vessis that look great and just equal that world-class comfort that I got from that first pair of shoes. They are absolutely my favorite shoes that I've ever owned. Imagine your favorite sneaker style supercharged with waterproof technology and unmatched comfort. No matter how you like to stay active, Vessi has the shoes for you. Trail-ready high tops, effortless slip-ons, and classic court shoes, all with a waterproof twist. They are just as comfortable and stylish as your favorite sneakers, but even more versatile. So guys, if you're anything like me and you want the most comfortable pair of shoes that look great, that you can take out hiking, wear to work, go to the gym, or walk through the water and snow, go to Vessi.com slash Campia and get yourself a pair today. Go to Vessi.com slash Campia and get 15% off your order using the code Campia. I don't know, you read all of this. What's your takeaway from it? When this news came out yesterday, Logan and I lost our minds of, they don't have showrunners? <laughs> They don't have show Bibles? Are you kidding me? It, it explains so much, though, it doesn't does. it? It yeah. does. It explains so much. But it's it's the most base thing where when you are a writer trying to pitch shows, you have to have a show Bible. That'd be absolute lunacy to not provide that pitch deck, right? With your formatting, your episode outline, your character information, and then to have that reference tool later on. You say somebody's mother's name, you say somebody's favorite food, you have that stuff in there always. It's this well-manicured, well-documented thing so that you can always have continuity. Continuity is pretty freaking important in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Well, it just explains so many of their series where we're just like, what was that episode? Exactly. Where, yeah. Why? What, what is this arc? Yeah. Because they say the writers are coming and going and it's executives with keys to the car. Which is not a good idea. Yeah. Executives are great at what they do. They are not writers. They are not showrunners. They should not have the keys to the kingdom. They should green light things and, and perhaps have a say and they all have a nice conversation about that, but they're not writers and they don't know what they're doing. You know, shows like WandaVision had, you know, Jack Schaefer as a head writer. Right. So at least that's how we got that nice congruency throughout. And Schaefer also brought in tons of different types of writers on that show. People who weren't versed in comics, but who were brilliant writers. Uh, one of our most favorite lines from that show, right? What is grief, but uh, if not love, persevering. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, that's from somebody who did not have a lot of prior comic book knowledge, but does beautiful storytelling and was able to fit into this writer's room really seamlessly, right? You have to have people who are putting their own Avengers together. You have to have people who are assembling this in such a strong way that you create something wonderful and you don't rush it and make it this weird stretched out B movie. Now, what I've heard too is that they are planning on scaling back tremendously in addition to having yeah, you know, all these things. Yeah, Iger kind of hinted at that. Yeah, um, some people I know have said that as well. Um, and I think that's for the best because that's been the biggest issue that we've talked about so much the past two years. It's been this whole quantity over quality and I will take quality any day. And I know someone in the chat is gonna say, give me both, try it, try both and see how that works because that's what they've been trying to do. And every now and then we get something good mm -hmm. every now and then. And that's not worth it. Put out a couple things that are absolute bangers and then save those other ideas for your next phase or well, your look, next season. Look at the difference of something that was a tour driven like Andor mm -hmm. and then Obi-Wan. Yeah. 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 And look, and look, I, I don't think, I don't think I, it's completely out of bounds to say this Marvel, the MCU was never better than they were three movies a year. Yeah. They, they've never been better than when they're at that. And so 
we'll see if this indeed does have a bit of a silver lining on it. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we have a daily podcast called the John Campy Show podcast available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app of choice. Go and subscribe to it today so it'll be there when you need it.